Hi there Maple fans and in this series of videos I'll be sharing what I do throughout an entire year on a monthly basis. Please note that these months are based on UK timings but of course can easily be adapted to anywhere else in the world. So here's a quick shot of the, the area of the garden that's under my shelter I constructed and as we can see a massive massive difference in just a few weeks and we'll keep going back to this in future videos so we can see the transformation over the year really which I hope you'll enjoy. Uh, what a difference two or three weeks can actually make uh, October to November huge change. So what we'll do is take you on a little bit of a journey through my trees uh, Shishikashira here lovely tree actually still quite a bit of foliage on it's got the mo most leaves on any of my trees so I think we'll sort of leave that well alone to be honest with you and that's one just to come back to later. So moving on to Acer Red Wine this is much more typical uh, most leaves have now fallen and it's just good to inspect it but we can see there's no leaves sort of clinging on inside the branches everything's come away quite cleanly really whereas the next one Shana here which is absolutely amazing to see actually because it's such a tight compact uh, tree with lots of tiny leaves on it it looks quite interesting it's absolutely sort of swarming with little nodules which bode incredibly well for next year to be honest with you so you can be sure that's going to do well a little bit to die back there from the previous year which is absolutely fine i wouldn't be touching these now i really wouldn't basically because dieback may occur during the winter months and it's the wrong time of year that's something i could have done perhaps last year and why not sort of do the job in the spring and remove everything that you need to and just over the winter period it becomes more and more obvious and clear what's going on just one little tip here um it's a good time to sort of pick up your little uh, labels perhaps remark append them if that's what you do it, once they're out of leaf some of these cultivars it's pretty difficult to sort of tell them apart to be honest with you so it's a good matter of habit really just to uh, tidy things up and as you'll see and i'll do this with quite a few trees there really is a lot of leaf litter here which inherently is not a problem but with this much i just don't want it to sort of get damp and go rotten and start making the tree uh, sort of really soggy and really just inspecting uh, that tree I've just noticed the one next door a little bit uneven so good chance to angle it tilt it make it sort of straight and of course make sure that the what's below it is has got good drainage as placing the tree on perhaps wet grass clay mud etc um, might block the hole up over the winter period so on this net tree uh, Siriu uh, absolutely fine some of them you'll find are really sort of tightly compacted branches particularly those of us that are upright habit so they can accumulate a bit of debris in between that's perhaps not going to get blown away by the wind and could get stuck so I, I just like to have give that a little uh, bit of TLC and clean that out basically shouldn't be a massive problem but while I'm here expecting it treat everything tree by tree um, just a really good opportunity to to give it a once over I suppose really so just looking here as well uh, there's a bit of a tie that was around the tree against that stake now it might be worth actually at this point just removing the stake entirely because this is a well-established tree in that pot but uh, I'll come back to this later but those ties can be uh, a bit of a problem so uh, why not remove it if it's not doing any good and just moving on to this uh, red sentinel to Wombi's red sentinel of course with the leaves uh, all off the tree you can really start to see into the structure of the tree um, and its form of course this time of year sometimes it's about what not to do as much as about what to do um, I wouldn't be pruning these yet uh, again I'll wait to the spring it's it's better I think for the tree to do the pruning just before it's growing season so it recovers better um, also if you prune at the wrong time of year you can get a lot of sap um, sort of damage the tree slightly but uh, in general I mean this year it's been pretty mild so the amount of uh, problems at this stage are pretty limited and if you have a look there there's an absolute bundles and bundles of leaf litter which again in this example uh, particularly if it's going to pile up against the tree itself and especially around the uh, the point where it's been joined to the sort of mother plant at the bottom because these are grafted trees it's really worth just making sure that uh, that's been dealt with and then we have a little fella um, Yukon that's uh, relatively new to me uh, what you can see there is a few weeds and bits and pieces now of course aces are deciduous they kind of go dormant and don't grow over the winter but uh, certainly some weeds still will so uh, we don't want the tree to get overwhelmed by them so i think it's a good time to uh, to remove those as best we can to be honest and here we have um by who which is a super super racer for the winter as featured in last week's video again lots and lots of leaf litter there 
it really just depends on the tree to be honest with you some of the sort of bigger palmate leaves there's sort of less leaves these are a kind of smaller and more dense leaves on some of the trees particularly the red sentinel we saw before um, as you say there's a, a really nice graft point there that's uh, nicely exposed so that'll be fine for that one now this little uh, Cripsy, which if you watch the channel a lot will know I've grown to love this year it's, uh, it's done really really well um, probably a bit over potted in previous years but this year it's done superbly the leaf litter there again getting rid of it but I just think it's a really interesting time of year to be honest so it, it, they're not beautiful they're not fantastic they're not full of amazing colours in general but uh, to be able to see the structure of them and all those myriad of tiny little buds which again bode really well for next year so I'm happy about that um, is really good you can also see quite clearly the colour changes so the tips um, of it are a different colour there to the greener uh, stems leading to it that's new growth so that's why we don't want too much growth into the winter months because that needs to harden off so I referred earlier in the video to the fact that with the leaves off you can see things better and I had noticed that that uh, tie there is sort of uh, impinging on the stem I'm sure that'll be fine but uh, it's a good job I noticed I suppose really on a Karen like that so removing that will give it a chance to uh, to heal really and here we have the firecracker deceptum that I've really enjoyed this year particularly in the autumn and just to say that I wouldn't really be pulling those leaves off I'd, I'd rather leave them be and let them fall naturally so uh, this has done very well this little walk around uh, not much to do but I'd come back to that tree uh, a bit later and so on to Aratama again a uh, relatively new acquisition some die back there from the spring that uh, I never got around to removing to be honest with you but uh, that's absolutely fine and just to note it's located in its new location for 2024 based on my experiences of 2023 so super tree here Jerry Swartz lots and lots and lots of foliage um, it really is a great deal so just clearing that out and you can just about see in the center there it's accumulated some in the middle so we'll have a little dig in a delve just to make sure that comes loose these upturned vase shaped trees um, absolutely fantastic habit form look beautiful but they can just accumulate some leaf litter um, in the branches there so while i'm at it you know just why not remove it um, and tidy things up a bit now i hope this doesn't shock regulars to the channel um, i do actually collect uh, hosta i started to do recently so i i think uh, perhaps next year we'll, we'll have a little bit dis more discussion about sort of related plants the only rule I have actually in my garden is that everything ends in, you know, the Latin term japonica. So it's def definitely a sort of Japanese garden in, in the species sense. But I think these hostas are absolutely lovely. Um, big, broad leaves, not quite pretty flowers, really. I mean, you don't grow them for that. But the lesson here is, uh, and it, it's sort of going back to that leaf litter sort of scenario, really. So there is a, a tenuous link there. But what you really don't want with hosta is a load of sort of mouldy, decaying dead leaves on the top. Um, because it might just damage the sort of huge bulb type thing underneath the surface so it's really just important just to, to give them a tidy and a clean I do find the leaves actually I, I just leave them until they become loose and you can just pull them away quite freely to be honest with you and all I've had to do to be honest is uh, cut the stalks there so a quick uh, a quick dive away from maples but um, worth worth noting perhaps so channel regulars may uh, remember the seedlings I had to play with potting uh, this year um and you know here we are i'm not going to do anything special with them a again the the winter months is about what not to do is what to do if i put them in a garage and try and over protect them they're not going to get very hardy really and the danger is i'll forget to water them months go by and they'll completely dry out and get totally desiccated so they're in their defensive position they're just by a fence there and there's no reason they won't do really well so this is a lovely little tree interestingly um, about the only tree I have that's in a glazed pot really and I always get these little weedy things growing all over them somebody will know what they are I don't but it's interesting I think that the waters retain more in these pots and that's not always a good thing so hence uh, in the majority of cases I just use porous clay ones so do aces need to be uh, cared for especially in the winter it really really depends on your location in the world to be honest so these little fellas here um, coming up absolutely fine good drainage left them in their technical pots not an issue so I live in UK zone 8 and that should mean there is absolutely no problem um, because in zone 8 they are hardy 
it's really worth bearing that in mind. Uh, people think that maples hate direct sun, they have to be massively protected. There's a huge number of uh, cultivars and varieties to choose from, uh, as well as species, of course, the dissectums and all the rest of them. So you can't generalise, but certainly in the UK, large parts of North America, um, they're going to do absolutely fine, don't need massive protection. But if you get very, very, very cold weather and deep frost, then of course that's different. I think it's just a question of considering the fact that what happens in nature is that trees produce thousands of seedlings and many die, some survive because they happen to land in the right location. So if we can sort of manage that pretty well and put them in a, the location they're going to thrive in, then uh, all's going to be well, really. And just the uh, new acquisition there, again, just leave well alone till next year.